Welcome back to Garden Talk, brought to you by the Penn State Erie County Extension Master Gardeners. And again, today I'm your co-host, Mike Bailey, along with Ellen DePlacido. Ellen, I think you're with me, aren't you? I am. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, yes. Very quiet. <laughs> yes, very quiet. Okay. Hey, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Last time we talked about planting of trees, and we talked mm-hmm. about bare root trees and bald and burlap trees. But this mm-hmm. time there's another division out there, a section right. that we want to touch right. base on. And this is really important because right. so many of the trees okay, are presented in this way now. And that is what, yes. Ellen? We're going to talk about container-grown trees. Mm. and the special attention that they need. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. They do. Okay. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. what is some of that special attention? Okay. Well, just to give you a little um, background, these trees have probably been in a container for maybe two to three years while in the nursery. And they've been uh, the nursery people have been using drip watering and fertilization. So when you buy one of these trees, they are definitely going to be pot bound. And what this means is that those roots have developed a circular pattern that will continue after planting unless you take some sort of action to disrupt that circular pattern that has already started in that container. And Mike's going to talk to you about how to prepare that root ball before you plant that tree. Yeah, you're right, because this is very yeah, important, and I, you know, it's one of the most common questions we get at the um, hotline, garden hotline for the extensions. Why is my tree not doing well? Why mm-hmm. is it dying? Why is the shrub dying? Why does it look all brown? Well, right. it's because what you got to do, you know, with these trees that are, have been grown in containers, you got to take, you know, some kind of action, like Ellen said, to break up that circular pattern of growth. You start off by removing them from the container, even the pea pots. Okay, I don't mm-hmm. care if they tell you that the pea pots will, will break down in the soil. Yeah, they will in a, in a year or so. Okay, but you, <laughs> but you want to get these trees off to a good start immediately. Right. Uh, right. And you want to take that, that root ball and you want to soak it in a bucket of water or a tub of water for two or three hours before you make an attempt to plant this. Because what has happened if those trees have been there for that, as long as Ellen said, that two or three years, and that's not uncommon, uh, it, that, that root ball almost gets to be like a cork. And it's, mm-hmm. yeah, you, everybody understands how, wet, how hard it is to get a cork wet. You almost can't. Right. And so you really got to kind of work at this a little bit. And then once you soak it a little bit, you're going to take a utility knife of some sort, and you're going to put a slice, okay, in that root, bill, root ball, excuse me, from the top to the bottom, about four different places all the way around. And you're going to cut in about an inch, inch and a inch and a half. Yeah, you are. You know, and then you're going to put a big <laughs> put a big X in the bottom of it. Then you're going to take a hand, small hand tool, and you're going to try to pull those roots out of that circular, you know, pattern of growth. And it's going to take you a little bit of time to do that. And uh, I, I walked through with one of the ladies up the street the street okay she was planting some trees and she looking for some advice so you know i told her about all this i said listen you know when you got a tree like this hey you got to remember that you have a hundred percent of the roots in that pot if you're working with a bare root tree or a bald and burlap they probably left 80 percent of the roots in the ground so you don't have to worry about damaging some of the roots for this potted plant and it, it and you and you got to be you got to be rough. And I says, well, you, did you cuss and swear a little bit at it too? <laughs> she says, she oh, says, no. yeah, I did, I did. I go, well, that's good, that's important. <laughs> okay, either, either either at the root ball or at me. Okay, I said, yeah, okay. And you, and you probably need to spend about fifteen minutes kind of doing this because this is your one opportunity to kind of break up some of that circular pattern. And you know, once you get that all done, what are you going to do with then, Ellen? Well, then you're going to try to follow the directions that we've already talked about. You're going to place that in a hole at the proper level and and then follow the directions that we gave you. And remember, once you place that in that tree in that hole, it shouldn't wobble back and forth. It should be sturdy. And um, then you have to water what Mike calls these corks two or three times a week with a two gallon bucket of water. It takes a lot to to get that um root system moist enough so that it can develop and be strong. And um, 
again, use your head. You know, you, it, maybe it won't take two gallons of, of, of water every week or two or three times a week, but use your head. And then you want to, again, watch for leaf scorch. So that might mean that you need to increase the watering, that it's not getting enough moisture. And again, that, that leaf scorch is a browning of the edge of the leaf. Mm-hmm. I, you know, what, that means they're starting to dry out for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. And if you see that, you've got to increase the amount of water that you're giving it. So, you know, these are, these are tough things to do. I, I know why the nursery did this. It's, it's less expensive to grow trees like this, and they're trying to keep mm-hmm. their overall costs down, et cetera, and stuff like that. But that means that the the purchase, the individual who purchased the tree is going to plant it, has got to take some extra steps, whether it be a tree or a shrub. It's the same thing. Now, some of these things maybe haven't been in the pots, in, in the containers that particular long, and you'll find out that maybe it's kind of loose still. And that's wonderful. That's that's, that's what you really want. But if it's if it's tight, okay, I mean, sometimes I think you can actually make a bomb shelter out of these root balls. <laughs> that's how that's how hard it is. Okay, I don't uh-huh. think you, I don't think you could you know, get any kind of a weapon through these things. So it's very difficult. Yeah. So, and, you know, and, and I've gone through this in a couple of different situations around the neighborhood and, and with some friends. And even some of the nursery people don't take the time to do this, okay, and to, and to break up this circular pattern. And then we see these trees either dying that same season because people haven't watered them correctly they stand on their porch with a hose and try to get enough water by the base of the tree no you got to take a bucket of water and you got to saturate the soil around there around the base and, and let it drain out so uh all this is very very important if you if you struggle with this if you need some you know additional advice don't be afraid to call the garden hotline and we'll be happy to help you ellen i think we've used our time for today Okay. But we've covered our topic very well, I think. So thank I you. I think so too. Yep. Thank you for listening. Bye bye. Bye.